when it comes to the Death Forest movies. This seems to be a running theme following each and every entry, that I have absolutely no idea what's going on, neither do the actors really, and definitely not the guy who didn't get paid enough to subtitle these. To amplify my point of no one knowing literally anything about it, here's the plot synopsis on IMDb. They took a bad turn when they took the shortcut to their house, their car broke down, and they can't escape the forest. The movie features no cars breaking down or any forests. It should be called Deaf Parking Lot. All of the other movies had terribly inaccurate subtitles made for them, so it's a nice surprise to see that this time around the subtitles are done perfectly well, is what I would say if this time around the subtitles were done perfectly well. As the movie begins, with the constant subtitles on screen, repeating yeah 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 as absolutely no one is talking. A running theme throughout the movie, as any time no one is talking, the subtitles consist of various phrases including yeah yeah yeah, with the occasional yes thrown in for good measure. So after about two and a half minutes of constant yeses on screen, we see Kazuki arriving at the restaurant owned by the socially awkward old woman from the previous movies, as it's a flashback to those movies, just in case you randomly decided to watch the fourth part in the series without watching any of the others first. We see Kazuki asking the woman for directions, while we see the cameraman battle his Parkinson's disease. After seeing even more flashbacks from the previous movies, we then see Kazuki in his home asking what kind of small hole is it, before it cuts to an older man being taken care of in some kind of care facility with no other patients in it because that would cost too much money. After being seen to by his nurse, the old man proceeds to sit up and say, that's how to take the crab, after all it seems to be minimised. Crab man aside, we're introduced to a woman named Sayori who receives a text message from her father, and using Google Translate, I'm able to expertly deduce with my astute knowledge of the Japanese language that it says, I'm safe, don't worry, Please take care of what I entrusted to you. Sayori's father, being Naoto from the previous movie, who must have managed to pass an envelope onto his daughter containing sensitive information, before he found himself as a light snack for a slightly pale Japanese woman. Kazuki, while driving, has a flashback of meeting the woman at the end of the previous movie who told him Naoto had gone missing, where he then proceeds to say, I'm alive, I've killed my own beauty, or I've been in hospice. Whoever wrote these subtitles must have been in hospice. We then see him in a car with said woman, as they're driving out to meet Yoshi's husband after finding out about his whereabouts at the end of the previous movie. They then arrive at the care facility to meet the old man, and Kazuki starts to experience visions just like his niece did in the previous movie any time Yoshi happened to be around, as I guess stealth isn't really her biggest strong point. And after entering a room, Kazuki comes face to face with Yoshi's husband, as we learn that it's the crab man from before. And before being able to engage in any old people crab adjacent activities, Yoshi appears behind the man and bites him in half, because half a husband is better than a whole one. Suddenly she disappears with half of her spouse still inside of her mouth, and Kazuki runs out of the building to see if he can spot her, but instead sees the creepy old woman staring at him from the distance, before she too disappears, as that's a thing that old people in Japan can do. Sayori meets up with her friend to talk about the text from her dad, and after talking for a while they decide to take a look at the envelope, but just as they're about to open it, she receives another text from him saying, never look at what I entrusted you, because remember kids, your parents know everything. A male friend, incredibly important to the story, then suddenly arrives, and proceeds to tell them information about occult activities occurring in the local forest, as that's the youth's idea of fun these days. And despite receiving the text from her father, Sayori hands it to a male friend to open, but he seems hesitant to take it, saying, yeah, it seems like you can drink it. Yeah, I'm sure you can drink anything if you're brave enough. Kazuki decides to return to where this nightmare began for him, and arrives at the restaurant owned by the old lady for some of that lovely old people food. And after finding that it's no longer in business, he's let in by the renting agent, and I'm pretty sure Kazuki's told that it was never owned by an old woman, but then again this rental agent did quite literally just say, it shouldn't be 10 years of evaporation, so do with that information what you will before it evaporates. We then see Kazuki's friend and Naoto's co-worker meet Sayori and her friends as she's coming out of one of Naoto's properties. And after they all go inside to talk, they discuss the disappearance of her father and the project that he was working on at the time. The project of Yoshi and her big stupid head. Sayori hands over the envelope to the woman, as I guess she's the one that it was meant to be delivered to. And inside the envelope contains a very old looking picture with an equally as old woman in it sitting over a body. The same woman who's been engaging in her favourite pastime of staring at children in the past three movies. After looking at the picture, Sayori then receives another text from her father telling her to go to an address, followed by Sayori saying, 
Mecha-san's milk makes you understand. I bet it does. Mecha-san being the woman who she handed the envelope to, with me being pretty sure, with my expert knowledge of the Japanese language, that she's actually saying Mika-san, a fact that we're going to proceed to completely ignore, purely because Mecha-san's milk will make you understand. The rental agent then tells Kazuki about a superstition involving a monster eating people in the forest, I don't know, never heard about it, and tells Kazuki that he can't offer him the building because the monsters will come to collect it, to which Kazuki responds to by asking him if he's ever seen the president. Well, has he? I need to know. Soda! Kazuki then receives a call from the nurse who was looking after Yoshi's husband, but now only looks after half of Yoshi's husband, as we see one of the other nurses walking home, as apparently there's more than one of them now, before Yoshi appears behind her and hilariously pulls off her coat before eating her because she's jealous of her coat-wearing capabilities. How dare you have a body. And it's about now where it becomes incredibly apparent that the visual effects have taken somewhat of a hit in this installment, which actually works in the movie's favour, simply because it's funny. The nurse then comes across her colleague being consumed for extra protein, before quickly finding herself consumed because Yoshi is just greedy. Mecha, Sayori and her friends call Kazuki to tell him where they're going to deliver the photo after being drunk with Titin, to which Kazuki seems incredibly upset at because he really wants to get drunk with Titin. He's so angry in fact that he proceeds to not go there, but to head to the facility where Yoshi's husband was being looked after, where he finds the nurse's phone, but no nurse. So after getting back in the car and reading the forwarded message of the address they're headed to, he proceeds to once again experience a flashback, just as we see them arrive at what appears to be an old abandoned factory. They then proceed to split up, immediately followed by them unsplitting up, as they find a way inside. They come across a totally not ominous at all room filled with lit candles, as someone is clearly just trying to set the mood. Yeah, the mood for some head. The old woman then suddenly appears with her funny looking dogs, before suddenly disappearing, as they're all charged by the pesky Caucasians. They run away, but just like herpes, the creatures keep popping up to ruin a good time, when suddenly the male friend runs directly into Yoshi, as apparently seeing isn't one of his strong points. And Neva is living, as she proceeds to bite him in half for not looking where he's going. After running away and having a little cry about their friend now being short, Mecha says, Picasso edible I saw, as an edible was obviously eaten by whoever subtitled this. Wanting to prove Yoshi's existence and I guess not live or something, she then proceeds to stand up and start taking pictures as she's surrounded by a couple of dudes from Ohio tweaking out until eventually Yoshi arrives. And the camera flash, which for three movies now has proven to be somewhat of an effective defence against Yoshi, just kinda doesn't, and Yoshi helps herself to a nice mecha sandwich because who really cares about continuity when you're a giant floating head? Sayori then grabs the camera as they're being pursued by the creatures, when suddenly Yoshi appears behind them. And just as they're about to meet their end, Kazuki appears with a flashing flashlight, as apparently that's now something that can be effectively used again. Magical made up rules aside, he freezes the monster in place as it shows off its cool dance moves, and they manage to get away by using the power of a door. Kazuki then looks at the picture to learn that the old person is indeed old, before reading a note on the back of it too blurry for Google Translate. A note that appears to be saying something about Emperor Meiji, some guy who did something one time, who ruled from about 1867 to 1912. So perhaps that's who she's sitting over in the picture. And after learning that she's at least 100 years old, Kazuki opens the door and punches one of the creatures in the face, as apparently that's just something they could have been doing for the entirety of the four movies now, when suddenly Yoshi appears and eats Sayori's friend. No, not the deep, complex character who played a vital role to the story. After managing to get away from Yoshi themselves due to the power of plot armour, I guess she just doesn't exist anymore, as they confront the old woman standing in front of an expertly edited green screen, before perhaps one of the best visual effects to ever be featured in any movie ever plays out, as she takes a step off, with me never seeing something so seamlessly done in all of my life. Kazuki being confused about what she was doing with a green screen and a cracked version of Adobe After Effects, looks over the ledge to see absolutely no sign of her whatsoever, before getting a little bit puzzled and saying boat. Boat. He then turns to see Yoshi chewing on something, either Siori's friend or the old woman who might have just dropped down right into her mouth because living is overrated, before Yoshi suddenly dashes at Siori and eats her too, with the movie just kinda coming to an end, with Kazuki looking in the distance. Okay. And somehow, I think not being able to understand Japanese has made this far more of an enjoyable experience. At least I'm able to be entertained by the subtitler's ongoing mental breakdown. 
So before this video comes to an end, I'd like to just give a big shout out and a massive thank you to all of the YouTube members and patrons, the people who every month continue to support the channel. If you're interested in becoming a YouTube member or a patron yourself, not only are you just being a great help to the channel, but you also get access to a few little perks, like being able to join the private Discord server, where you then get links to all versions of uncensored videos going forward. So starting off with this week's new YouTube member signups, a massive thank you to It's V2, Leonie Feed, Rob, Rex, Bradley Hendricks, Inzane Ambrose, Gialaya, Amit Meta, Bessingler, Jeffrey Nanton, Zaza Lord, Chris Pike, Catman Drinks Coffee, Tristan Rempel, Hojo, Daniel Combs, Encrypted Earth, Edward Kenway, Whole Horse, Unlucky Mango, Michael Martinez, A7, Hori 7Y, Movie Jack, Andrew Silver, Caleb Herbert, Mert Somali, Dai Shipton, and Joey Jojo 1708. And heading over to this week's new Patreon signups, a massive thank you to Kyle LeBau, Jonathan Harer, Jake Simpson, Mental, Tyler Rogers, Beth and Rob, Andre Valeran, Andre Valeran again, Griffin Strunk, More Terms, Bricks for Dinner, Connor, Wyatt Robbins, and Alquito de Leon. So once again, a massive shout out to all of the YouTube members and patrons, and a big thank you to everyone else for watching.